Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Collection Tour update. I'm pretty sure we're either on Collection Tour 14 or 15. There's been so many but there's been a hell of a lot of changes since the last one. So I wanted to quickly give you an update on everything that has been put into the display cases. Now if you haven't seen any of these videos before, first of all, welcome to the channel. And also I want to say a huge thank you to all of the subscribers. We finally surpassed the 30k subscriber milestone. I want to say a huge thank you to each and every single one of you. If you haven't already, go and check out some of the really early Hot Toys reviews that I do, and why not hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more. Either way, these collection tours are basically a way to sit down, take a look at all the figures on display, and check out all of the new stuff in the display cases. Now, speaking of display cases, these two, and the one behind me as well, are from shopfittingsdirect.com.au, so if you'd like to pick up your very own, go ahead and check them out. And a majority of these figures on display are from Philip Liu from Toys Wonderland HK, including that beast right there, which we'll get to a little bit later in the video, don't worry, we're going to show it a little bit of love. So if you are looking for even some older figures, like this guy down here, he can also hook you up, so do let him know. Either way, let's start off with my personal favorite collection being the Infinity War line. As you can see, it's one of the most complete lines in the entire collection. I have actually moved Civil War Falcon up from the Civil War display. I think he provides a little bit more vertical differentiation on this plane right here because it was a sort of single plane. Now you can see there's a lot of different levels. I really like the way this shelf looks. And I've also organized them in teams. So of course, this right here is the Titan team. So the Avengers that were on Titan. And then of course, course, the Earth-based team is over here. Now, you'll see that we've got a new member of the family right there, and we'll get to him a little bit later, but damn, that figure is one of my personal favorites. But either way, this shelf is looking spectacular. I love the sort of juxtaposition of having Tony and then Cap, the sort of two main Avengers, in my opinion, on the flank of Thanos right there. That looks absolutely spectacular. Now, moving down here, we have the Civil War display. As you can see, I'm pretty sure everyone is nice and visible. There's been some reorganizing since. Maybe we'll move Ant-Man over just a little bit so you can see Scarlet Witch, but everyone is pretty much visible, and I really like the way this shelf is looking, and of course, if you stand back, you've got Tony smack bang in the middle of the whole display with his enormous display base with all the rubble around him, as you can see. Now, tucked back in the corner there, we have Doctor Strange, and of course, the first version of Ant-Man, who is absolutely fantastic. He's kind of hanging out for the rest of his line whenever Ant-Man and the Wasp show up. Then it'll be sort of a Hank Pym in the original style Ant-Man suit, and then, of course, the two new ones. Then Doctor Strange is hanging out back there with Scarlet Witch, sort of as a nod to the Multiverse of Madness, of course, until we get those eventual figures, and I really can't wait to see that film. And moving down here to the Avengers 1 display, this is also one of my personal favorites. As you can see, taking center stage, we have the Battle Damage Mark 7, who looks fantastic. Really awesome figure. I love that piece. That was picked up in Hong Kong, so if you do want to pick one up, Philip Liu has one in stock right now. So hit him up with the link down in the description below. And everyone else is nice and visible. Now, unfortunately, Nick Fury is a little bit covered up. What I might do is move Iron Man a little bit more center stage and move Hawkeye over to where Loki is, because, of course, Hawkeye was mind-controlled by Loki anyway, so it kind of makes sense. But standing back, I think this is a really nice display with all of the Avengers from, of course, Avengers 1. Now, moving down to this shelf right here, you can see the Iron Man collection, and it's looking absolutely fantastic with my personal grail piece tucked in the back there. I know people use the word grail a lot, and I tend to as well, but that guy right there, the Mech Test Tony, is one of my all-time favorites. Then, of course, we've got the Mark 1, which is the Mark 1 2.0. He comes with the flamethrower effect and the awesome diorama style display base. Mark 2, and then, of course, the Mark 3. That one right there, the Mark Mark III diecast is my personal favorite Iron Man figure in the entire collection. It's the grandfather of the MCU, and it's the most classic one, in my opinion. You definitely can't go wrong. Now, moving over to the other side, these operate on a sliding mechanism, so I do have to close one side before we open the next one, but this side right here is the work-in-progress display. So you can see that this is going to sort of be, or it's ideally it's going to be, Endgame on this side, and then Infinity War on that side. But that guy right there... Take a look at the clean lines on that guy. He looks absolutely fantastic. Of course, that is D23 cap. Now, I'm using the ultra-wide angle lens on the new iPhone, so it's probably distorting him a little bit, but he looks absolutely fantastic. But this is the best way to give you a look at pretty much all the figures on display without having to keep going backwards and forwards. And then tucked back there is my Elite Toys cap head sculpt on an Infinity War cap base, strike suit cap outfit, and then a Gang Hood 1.0 muscular body. I think he looks absolutely fantastic. And then, of course, we've got the uh, nano suit Tony with the 
one six kit sunglasses. I'm stumbling a little bit because I struggle to remember where I sourced each and every single little bit, but it does come together really darn nicely. And now moving down here, you can see the rest of the Civil War team. Here we've got Team uh, Iron Man, and then of course on that side, I should have said Team Cap, Team Iron Man. I split it down the middle. It looks amazing. That's the Age of Ultron Vision tucked back there. I really hope Hot Toys goes back and does another Vision, uh, Vision I should say, just because I'd like to pick up another one for not only Age of Ultron, Civil War, and then to have one in the Infinity War display as well. And then sitting over here, we have T'Challa on his Hot Toys throne, looking absolutely amazing. Those two back there in real life are a little bit more visible, but in the frame, you can see their little top pieces of the chair extend sort of where their faces are. I might see if I can reorganize that a little bit because it's looking a little bit funky, but I love the way that T'Challa looks sitting on that throne. Now, moving down here, we have the Age of Ultron team. I love this display. It's looking absolutely fantastic with the recent addition of Maria Hill. Now, I know why this figure is Zachary's personal all-time favorite figure. Which other figure do you know out of anything that's been released that can cross their arms like that figure right there? That's absolutely insane. No swap out arms required. You can cross the arms and that's absolutely fantastic. And it's just a darn good figure as well. Now, I might actually move the Mark 45 over just a little bit into that gap right there so you can see a little bit more of him. But for now, that's pretty much final. It's looking absolutely fantastic. And moving down to the rest of the Iron Man shelf, it's getting a little bit crowded towards this end. It's a little bit top heavy, as you can see. We've got Iron Man uh, Mark V, then we've got the Mark VI die cast, then of course the regular plastic Mark VII, which of course will be replaced by the die cast one when that comes out. Then we've got Whiplash II, or the Mark II, I should say, War Machine Mark I, Whiplash Mark I, then we've got the Racing Suit Tony, we've got Pepper Potts from Iron Man 3, then we've got the Arc Reactor Creation Set Tony, just tucked in the back right there. Now that's the um, Transforming Suit suitcase, I'm pretty sure they call it, whichever third party company was that made that. Now, this piece right here is a piece that I have sold in the past. I regret it tremendously, and I picked it up again recently. This, of course, is the 89 Batmobile. Now, hold your breath, everyone. Here is the reveal. This thing is absolutely stunning. I'll put his little armor piece up there. Please don't fall down. But as you can see, this is absolutely gorgeous. I picked this up very recently from Philip Liu from Toys Wonderland HK. He does have them in stock for a very reasonable price, might I add. And I opted to have it shipped without the packaging just because the box that this thing comes with is as big as a refrigerator box. So I opted to have it shipped without the packaging, save myself a little bit of money. He can do either either, depending on how you'd like to have it. You can see it's still brand new. It comes with all the plastic and everything all over the windscreen. Absolutely fantastic. As I said, in stock right now, if you would like to pick up one of these bad boys, it is absolutely gorgeous. I am so thankful to have this back in the collection. It's just a centerpiece. I'd love to put it into a coffee table eventually because as I said, it's a centerpiece and it's absolutely stunning. Now moving up to the top of the display case, here are some of the life-size prop replicas, which is continuously being added to. I have a brand new one that I'll be reviewing very soon. Here we have the Mark 85 Arc Reactor, Mark 1, then the quarter scale uh, Infinity Gauntlet. This is the one-to-one -one scale Tesseract that I picked up recently from, again, Philip Liu from Toys Wonderland HK. It's got a nice sort of sparkle and glint to it. Absolutely gorgeous. I love that piece right there. And we've got the Nano Gauntlet, the uh, quarter scale version again, and then the Captain Marvel Pager. And then, of course, Drony as well. A little Drony there looking absolutely fantastic. Now, moving over to this this side right here, we have the Guardians of the Galaxy looking really, really cool. I love the way this shelf has turned out, especially with the recent addition of Stan Lee and his astronaut attire being all vibrant and yellow and a nice pop of color in this otherwise sort of drab display. It looks really good. You can see everyone. It has more of a movie poster sort of vibe with everyone sort of leading up towards Thanos as the central figure. It looks really, really good. I'm a big fan of how this looks. And then, of course, I'm waiting for the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 version of Gamora. Hopefully, she should be released soon. I'm going to pop her over with Thanos over there, I do believe. Now, moving down again, here we have the sort of start of the DCEU. It sort of goes in a chronological order, but kind of not really, because Wonder Woman should be like way over here, because she was obviously in the sort of ancient history. But either way, I started off with the first film being Man of Steel, and tucked in the back there, we've got General Zod and a third-party Fayora. She's by a company called Zensation, with an X. I picked her up in Hong Kong recently. Then we've got Jor-El, who, might I say, is a really nice starter figure. If you want to get into Hot Toys, you want to see a really nicely well-tailored well-detailed piece. He's actually going for a really low price, so why not pick him up as your first piece? And then, of course, we've got the Man of Steel himself, Henry Cavill as Superman. That is a lot of people's favorite version of Henry Cavill Superman. It's one of my personal favorites. I can't say it's my all-time favorite, but it's still absolutely stunning. 
And then moving over here, we have the training version of Wonder Woman who looks absolutely awesome. That is one of the most realistic figures in the entire collection. Not a single seam is visible on her and it looks absolutely stunning. Now you're going to hear me gushing a lot about the figures in this display. That's just because I absolutely love them. They're awesome. I wouldn't collect them if I didn't like them. So I'm sorry if that's offending anyone here, but these are just absolute works of art. Now speaking of works of art, that Chris Reeves Superman is a lot of people's grail and it absolutely should be. It's, as I said, a work of art. It looks fantastic. So too does the comic concept Wonder Woman. That is my personal favorite Wonder Woman. That sort of really nice gold chrome look and the lighter skin tone really works against the black hair. I love the way that looks. Then of course, evil Superman. Then we've got Adam West Batman and Burt Ward Robin looking fantastic in their really bright outfits. Then of course, moving over to the Tim Burton verse, we've got 92 Batman and then 89. These actually should be switched in my opinion. So I might actually go ahead and do that. And as you can see, this guy right here is wearing a custom cape from Jackson Jew. That's the stock hot toys cape. So as you can see, big difference between these two. That is an absolute must in my opinion. Looks so much better than the sort of trash bag looking cape that Hot Toys does give you. Great figure, just needs an upgraded cape. Now as you can see, moving over to this side, we've got the Mondo animated series Batman, we've got the Flash, and then of course we've got the Constantine. Those two figures right there are from So So Toys and I love them. Now moving down even further, we have my cap shrine. So over here you can see Iron Man shrine. Now over on this side, I've just started my cap shrine. Or I guess it's sort of complete. We've got the original Star Spangled Man cap. We've got the third party kit for the rescue cap, which turned out pretty well if you do ask me. Then we've got Red Skull and then we've got World War II cap. That head sculpt, in my opinion, looks just like Brad Pitt. I don't know what they did there, what went wrong with that one there, but it looks like Brad Pitt. Either way, still a great figure. Then, of course, in the middle, we have Strike Suit Cap. Now, let's move over to the other side of the display because there's a hell of a lot more figures to take a look at. We'll try and make this video as short as possible. Uh, the previous one, I think, was around 20 minutes. Let's see if we can get it even shorter than that. Either way, on this side, we have the League. The League is coming along very nicely, might I add. As you can see, we've got Tactical Suit Batman at the back there. Not sure if you can make it out, but he's standing on the Parademon display base, and he's holding the alien rifle that came with the beautiful deluxe version of uh, standard Justice League Batman. That is my favorite Batman. He is absolutely stunning. That is the best Batman figure, in my opinion, that Hot Toys has ever made. And as you can see, the rest of the league compliments him so very nicely. Now, you're probably wondering where Superman's gonna go. Well, he's gonna go right there in the middle. I'm gonna move Batman forward and to the left, Wonder Woman, same thing, and then Superman's gonna go right in the middle. Nice, vibrant pop of color, and it's gonna look fantastic. And then, of course, if Iron Geek 37 eventually gets around to making those cyborg figures that he's teased up with that look absolutely amazing, then I'll be picking up one of those and he'll be taking pride of place alongside the rest of the league. Now this shelf here is a little bit obscured by the sort of reflection but as you can see this is one of my personal favorites. It's got that sort of movie poster design where it's leading up towards a central figure which is of course a Batman in the back there and then all the rest of the Suicide Squad look amazing. I've got another dead shot display base that I've used for the Rick Flag. Still a really decent figure just with a little bit of an issue in terms of getting all the accessories on the gun just right and he just do a little bit of gluing and that body I just don't understand. If you're going to have an arm visible like the character does, he always rolls his sleeves up, then just detail the arm. That sort of bare plastic arm doesn't cut it for me. But the head sculpt's great. The outfit's good. Just needs a little bit of work. And then, of course, we've got Katana. That so-so toys Katana is, in my personal opinion, the very best third-party figure in the entire collection. It's amazing. Definitely worth the pickup. And then moving down here, we have the BVS shelf looking truly spectacular. Now, moving around, let's start off with this guy right here. It's probably going to get a little bit of a discussion going, but here we have the uh, strike suit cap body, actually, underneath the... Uh, I don't even know who made that outfit. I got it off eBay, but it's just a generic Bruce Wayne outfit. Then, of course, the Justice League Batman head sculpt. Now, the uh, wide-angle lens is causing a little bit of distortion, but in person and it looks really, really good. This is a fantastic kit. And the fact that the strike suit cap has a really wide set sort of pair of shoulders, it gives him that really buff look and I think it works really nicely. Now moving over here, we have the battle damage armored Batman tucked back there. And then of course the regular armored Batman on the other side. Then of course, two more Batman. Oh, there's so many Batman from figures from BVS, but we've got normal Batman and then Nightmare. Then of course, we've got the BVS Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman figure that was released by Hot Toys. Truly amazing. Still not that bad in today's sort of standards, but still, I think the uh, Justice League one and the Comic Concept one are just a little bit better for me personally. And we've got BVS Superman and then the third party first rate, the company's called Lex Luthor. 
Now, moving down again, here we have the Arkhamverse shelf. This is, again, one of my personal favorites. That figure right there, the Arkham City Batman, was one of my least favorites in the entire collection. But as soon as I got that custom cape from Jackson Jew, I've fallen in love. That thing looks amazing with that custom cape. I love how it drapes over the shoulders. I love the color of it. There's a nice juxtaposition between the, between the suit and the actual cowl and the cape. It just works so nicely. I love the way that guy looks. And then, of course, we've got Mark Hamill as the Joker. And then we've got the Futura Knight Batman. Thanks to Dean Knight for making me get that piece. Absolutely do not regret it. It is truly spectacular. That vibrant red is a nice pop of color on this shelf. Then we've got Arkham Knight Batman and Deathstroke, another amazing figure who articulates so far beyond what you'd expect in terms of a fully armored figure you'd expect him not to be able to move at all this guy can pose a treat which is excellent then of course we've got arkham knight and then we've got so so toys zoom so that's my sort of cw verse this like slither right down the middle there obviously that's going to be expanded if anyone does any more cw figures including hot toys now down here we've got the rest of the cap shrine this is of course the winter soldier display we've got the nick fury that i picked up from that's hot in melbourne check them out they've got a whole bunch of hot toys and older stuff figure stuff like that. Uh, check them out. I'm good buddies with the manager, Rick, so let him know that Justin sent you. And then, of course, we've got Falcon tucked in the back there. It was a feat, let me just tell you, to get him in there on that angle with that display base, but he's in there now, and he looks spectacular with his wings and everything. Truly awesome. Then this pose right here, huge thank you to Posing with Peter from MISB Media for this gem right here. It looks amazing. Again, huge thank you to Peter for that. He is a posing wizard. And then we've got the Golden Age suit cap, which is a pretty decent figure. I actually do prefer the original over the Golden Age, but that just comes down to the head sculpt, even though I said it looks like Brad Pitt on the older one. Now, moving up to the top here, let's take a look at some of the quarter scale figures. I apologize, it's a little bit dark up here. I don't actually have any lighting up here, but they still, I'm pretty sure, are quite visible. Anyway, we'll quickly whiz through them. We've got the Dark Knight Rises Batman, the Dark Knight Joker, the Batman Begins Batman, and we've got the Robocop 3 Enter Bay Robocop. Absolutely love that figure. That was a recent pickup and I adore it. And then we've also got Boba Fett, Mark 45, Mark 43, and of course the Mark 42. Now you're probably saying, Justin, where else are you going to put that Mark 40, uh, that Mark 3, sorry, and that Return of the Jedi Darth Vader? Well, I'll let you know when I figure it out. This stuff is going to have to move around a little bit. I'll find a way to fit them in. Do not worry about that. And then moving over here, unfortunately for now, he's just sitting off to the side. This is the top Joker, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Absolutely love that figure. And then in the review light box at the moment, because I just did the D23 cap, we've got the Avengers 1 cap with the Elite Toys head sculpt and the SW Toys Tony Stark figure in the shield suit. So those will have to go back in the endgame display a little bit later on when I get around to popping them back in. And then down here, along with the Wu Toys Stan Lee figure, which I'll be reviewing a little bit later today, we've got the Hulkbuster. A lot of you said, where's that Hulkbuster? I don't see it in your collection. Well, it's still here. He's just on the floor. I'm thinking about getting like a plinth or something made. So he sits, his head will just be a little bit below the light switch so maybe he sits a little bit higher just to get him off the floor he's a too he's too nice of a piece to have on the floor right there i need to figure out a display solution for him and then of course we've got the mark 43 busting right out of there now let's talk about some of the figures on top of this display case right here. This used to be Mezco stuff. Now it's one six scale stuff. So starting around here, this is sort of the Ragnarok style line. We've got Odin. Then we've got the Gladiator version of Thor. Then we've got Loki and Hela. And then of course, we've got the Hulk. So from a normal viewing distance like that, you can sort of see everyone. I think it looks really good. Let me know what you think down below. Then we've got the Venom statue, the Toy Zero Venom. Love this figure. This is an amazing figure. Check out the review if you haven't already. And we've got Spider-Man 3 back there. We've got black suit, red suit. And I've used that Venom as my sort of quasi Spider-Man 3 Venom. I think it looks really good. Now here we've got some sort of alien style figures. We've got the uh, the Avatar figure back there. I think they call it, I think it's Jake Scully. Let me know if it's Jake Scully. I believe it is. I uh, haven't seen Avatar in a very, very long time. So I have to brush up on my Avatar history before we see the sequel. And then we've got the classic 2.0 version of Predator. Then we've got the Iron Monger. And this Obadiah stain is a custom. The suit is from a ZC Toys, I do believe. I picked it up in Hong Kong, and the head sculpt actually was already inside the Iron Monger when I did put it together. Now, this shelf was a little bit more organized previously, but the Ed 209 is on the floor right now because I'm working on something that uh, hopefully will be up very soon. I picked up 
another ed 209 i picked up the second generation version from a really nice guy called hayden i picked it up and it needs a little bit of a repair on the dome and then i'll show it to you guys but he's the original versions on the floor because i was doing a bit of a comparison uh we've got the alex murphy regular diecast robo and then the battle damage robo and then of course the gantry from my good buddy aaron that's huge thank you goes out to aaron for sending that my way still can't believe how generous that dude is now as you can see here the star wars shelf is looking as busy as ever which i i still love it i love the fact that all the stormtroopers are sort of Buddle, um, bunched up. I don't even know. Buddled? I thought I was going to say bunched and muddled together, but as you can see, they look really good there. Then we've got sort of Rogue One figures off to the side, and of course, we've got the Patrol Trooper from Solo. Now, again, you're probably thinking, where on earth is all your Solo stuff going to go? Well, I don't know. Potentially, I'm going to work out something down here. There's a lot of space down here, but for now, they are looking pretty darn good. So we've got K2, got Jin Erso, Chirrut, and then of course, the Patrol Trooper. And now, having these two Vaders together, it's a little bit unfair because it shows this guy up a little bit in terms of having the rogue one there he looks so much better than that one that one's still not too terribly bad the original a new hope one but the 2.0 version that came with tarkin in my opinion is definitely a superior product but as you can see the rest of them are here now i finally got this space trooper this is the final trooper that i needed to complete my trooper collection at least in terms of all the basic ones i still don't have the white pauldron jetta patrol two pack and anything like that but for now, all of these basic ones are in the collection. And this Stormtrooper right here, the taller one, is the uh, Han Solo in disguise version. And this is just the normal Stormtrooper. But having them together kind of looks like Han and Luke, which I really do like. And then, of course, we've got the rest of the new Hope cast, I should say. I'm really struggling today. I'm stumbling over my words. But either way, you can see what I'm trying to say, at least. Then moving down here, we've got Darth Maul, Count Dooku. And I love that Yoda. That little Yoda looks so damn cool with his little cane on the floor there. I love the fact that the display base has the flooring of that little room they were fighting in so it gives him that really sort of in-universe look and then of course we've got the rest of the episode three cast we've got mace windu which is a third party figure and we've got obi-wan and then the two versions of anakin then of course the comic or i should say the cartoon version of boba fett which looks truly spectacular now moving down here we have the x-men or i should say the fox shelf i guess it's all Disney now anyway, but as you can see, we've got all the X-Men figures. We've got the X-Men Origins Wolverine, and we've got the X-Men 3 Wolverine, Days of Future Past. Then these two right here are, or in fact, these three are So So Toys figures, and that Psylocke is So So Toys as well. All absolutely amazing. And then this third-party Storm figure is, again, in stock with Philip Liu from Toys Wonderland HK. It's the Days of Future Past version of Storm, but it's a really inexpensive figure, so definitely worth checking out if you'd like a Storm in your collection. And then moving over here, we have the 2.0 version of Colossus, Dusty Deadpool, Deadpool 1, Deadpool 2, Cable, and then we've got Ajax as well. That shelf is one of my personal favorites. I love the way that one looks. Now moving down to the bottom here, tucked right in the back there, we've got the Hot Toys, Optimus Prime, we've got the Blitzwing, and then we've got a Bumblebee as well. Then we've got the Arnie, this is the DX-10, then we've got the Genesis version of the Endoskeleton, then we've got the third party Paul, uh, Agent Paul they call it, but it's Pierce Brosnan, we all know who that's supposed to be. And then we've got Doc Brown, Marty, and the Ghostbusters. Now I apologize for sort of blitzing through it, but we're getting a little bit lengthy on this video, I don't want to go too long, people might get a little bit bored. Then again, who can get bored looking at all of these awesome figures? But either way, let's move over to the other side of the cabinet. So as I said, I've done a lot of reorganizing in this uh, display case. I've removed pretty much most of my Sideshow stuff. I don't really support Sideshow as a company anymore. They always deliver your figures and no issues with customer service, but when it comes to how they treat collectors in the community, including myself, and also the fact that they fired Susan, all of that drama, I just removed most of the Sideshow products from my display, but I did keep the Bounty Hunters, I did keep that Luke right there, and then of course I kept the C-3PO. Everything else has been pretty much removed from the collection for now, until I, maybe I feel a little bit better about it, but it just, just puts a sour taste in the mouth when you go and look at at it. But either way, as you can see, the rest of the figures on display look fantastic. Got the Empire Strikes Back Vader, then of course DX07. So the way I've laid it out is Rogue One, A New Hope, then Empire in the middle, and then of course Return of the Jedi on this side right here, which looks all, in my opinion, really, really good. You can see everyone. Everyone's spaced out really nicely. There's no sort of figure blocking the other, in my opinion, I think. Especially in person, it comes a lot, uh, comes across, I should say, a little bit better than it does on camera. And then of course, moving down here, we have the 
new trilogy or the sequel trilogy, all of these figures are pretty much exactly the same as you saw them in the last collection tour video. Now a shelf that is pretty much all new is this one right here and it's one of my personal favourites. I said that about like every shelf now but no seriously this one is just that darn awesome. We've got the Netflix figures with the So So Toys Iron Fist, still one of my favourite all time So So Toys figures. Then we've got the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ghost Rider and then this pickup right here. A huge thank you to Zachary for forcing me to pick that one up at San Diego Comic Con. Absolutely don't regret it. That is an awesome Wilson Fisk Kingpin figure. Now, as you can see here, we have the PS4 game shelf. So we've got the Advanced Suit Spidey, Spider-Punk, and Scarlet Spidey. All three looking amazing. I love the way that looks. That little collection is ever-growing, and I love it. And then over here, we've got some more posing with Peter Goodness. This figure right here stole the pose from Peter, and it's truly spectacular. Huge thank you to Peter for that pose right there. We've got the Mark 47. Now we've got the second version of the Tech Suits Party with a couple of minor fixes. Check out the review if you haven't already. Then the two concept MCU figures as well. And then finally, down here on the bottom shelf, we've got the Black Box James Bond. Then we've got Neo in that same pose. Let me know if you think that pose is getting old. I still absolutely adore it. It's very dynamic and I love the way that looks. Then we've got the Pangea Toys Last Samurai figure. Then we've got John Wick and then Mrs. Collections figure being the Altair right there. Then we've got the Black Box Blade Runner 2049 figure, which is a pretty decent figure. I did shoot a review, but I haven't uploaded it yet. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Then we've got the CC Toys Nathan Drake. Then we've got Electro. So this is the sort of Sony uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man. I don't know why I was struggling with that there. Amazing Spider-Man shelf. It's a pretty decent shelf. I really do like the Amazing Spider-Man 1 figure. He's a really nice figure. I love those gold lenses and the outfit. But I don't know. It's just a small little collection there. Electro is definitely not anyone's favorite. It's not going to win anyone any awards for being the best figure in my opinion. Now this piece right here is a new piece. Check out the review again if you haven't already. This is the Mark 1 helmet. It's a fully wearable uh, sort of articulated helmet. You can open the top up. And I love it. For now, it's just sitting on the floor. I haven't quite found a place for it yet, but I am working on it. And then, of course, over on the side here, he still has to go back in the actual collection shelf. We have the uh, sort of kit bash version of Peter Parker. Now, this piece right here, I haven't actually revealed yet, but he's back in the collection. The Road Warm Thor, I've picked him up. He's back. I need to find a place for him, but he is finally back in the collection. I love this piece. I regretted selling it twice. I sold it. But finally, he's back. This time, he is not going anywhere. Now, to wrap up, I may, may as well show you some of the stuff in the shelving here. We've got the MPM Megatron, all of the Beast Wars MP figures. This right here is the brand new MP44 Optimus Prime. I did do a review. It's up on MISB Media, so check that out if you would like to. We've got a couple more MPM figures, and then the TE01 Optimus Prime. And poor Mantis is sitting in the back there. She just struggles to stand up, and she doesn't really come with a display base that's any, you know, actually worth showing or putting on display. So she is no longer in the display. But to wrap up... Here we have my pride and joy, the one-to-one -one scale BVS slash Justice League style Batman. I've got the Justice League cowl, but the BVS bodysuit. This is awesome. This was made by Ben Ball from Benable Effects. Huge thank you goes out to Ben. This is amazing work right here. The cape was made by Neo Gotham Hero, aka Cam. He did an amazing job on that as well. But everything is truly spectacular. All this stuff, custom made by those guys. So check them out on Instagram if you haven't already. Either way, that's pretty much it. Whew, finally, I can take a breath. We've taken a look at pretty much everything in the collection room. So again, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's hit that subscribe button and gotten us to 30k. The push is on now to 50k. Check out the review on the D23 cap. There's a giveaway going right now for the D23 cap. So check that out. It's your opportunity to go ahead and win that figure. It's an incredibly rare figure. So go ahead and check that out. That is, of course, sponsored by Philip Liu from Toys One Land HK. Huge thank you goes out once again to Philip for all of these awesome figures. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.